evolution's been taught in science class for how long now? And that's a quickly dying theory that many, many understand to be uh, an absurdity. Many, many understand to be an absurdity. This is Senator Azinger, Republican, of course, from uh, West Virginia, as it turns out. And he's got a lot to say. Oh, my God. You think the evolution thing was bad? Oh, just wait. He's got so much crazy stuff to lay down for us. I want to listen to like his whole breakdown of everything he said here. Yeah, I think it's like a minute and a half long or something. And then I want to talk about some other absolutely psychotic state level representatives. If you're unfamiliar how it works, yeah, we have federal representatives. We've got Lauren Bobert and we've got, uh, you know, Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi and all these other people. Those are federal level, but we have uh, the same structure on a state level. One, one level down, they operate in a very similar way. And there are a ton of really, really weird people in uh, the state houses. So let's listen to Senator Azinger, Republican, state-level senator in West Virginia, 3rd District, talk about evolution, abortion, and a whole bunch of other wild stuff. By the way, this clip came out late February 2024. Um, all of a sudden, we have a lot of senators who are uh, all upset and worried about accuracies in science class. I think... Yeah, I think people should be concerned about accuracies in science class. Sure. Go on. Class, I think it was the senator from Taylor who mentioned that, hey, look, evolution's been taught in science class for how long now? And that's a quickly dying theory that many, many understand to be uh, an absurdity in and of itself. Okay, many, many. Who is many, many? Are you going to give us some some names on that? Those are called weasel words, by the way, if you are unfamiliar, where he's just hand waving to some ambiguous authority. Many people say, OK, who? Which ones? Name them. Tell me which scientists you're referring to here. The answer is nobody. So nobody claims that evolution is a dying theory. Go on. Just because it can't pass the first test of first cause. Can't. Past the first test of the first cause. What do you mean by that? First cause. Uh, it, does he realize that abiogenesis and evolution are not the same thing? Is he aware of that fact? Abiogenesis, the study of how life came to be, how life appeared on the planet and started to grow in the first place. Evolution is the study of how life changes over time, or honestly, how a lot of things change over time. It's not just life. Things change and morph and modify and warp and, and becomes the thing that it needs to be to fill its role properly. You know, I knew somebody who used to keep their iPhone in their back pocket. Uh, people probably heard stories similar to this their iPhone slowly kind of bent a little bit upward. You know, it's kind of like a curve, not a strong curve, but just a little bit. And the glass, of course, stays straight, but the metal kind of bends a little bit. That is what is happening effectively with evolution. Things are trying to fit into their environment to more correctly adapt to uh, to better adapt to what's happening around them. I don't know what he's going on about this first cause thing. And he doesn't either, I'm sure. So this is a, this is a great bill. Um, it shows conception. And I'm concerned. And um, Google it. At the very nanosecond of conception, there's a flash of light. When conception occurs... In human beings, I believe it's across the whole animal kingdom. At the point, the second of conception, there's a flash of light. That's God telling us, I believe, that life begins there. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, well, I looked up what he was talking about here, this flash of light thing. And as it turns out, it's true. I checked this out. Look, watch. This is... The moment of conception, the moment an egg cell becomes an embryo officially, watch. 
flash of light. It's uh, and then it it recedes. It's real fast, and it 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 ends like just like that. I understand that the reason that it happens is because zinc is released, and my guess, I this is just me talking. Don't trust this at all. My guess is there's probably a flash of light because there's a very, very, very minor explosive reaction because zinc doesn't react very well when in the presence of water, I believe. It's like a Coulomb reaction, right? The point is that like, there are all kinds of incredible, amazing things about everything, about the human body, about uh, nature, about all of it. It's incredible. It doesn't mean that it didn't evolve. Well, let's put it this way. It doesn't mean that evolution isn't the way that God got there. And also, God explicitly endorsed abortion. Numbers 5, 11 to 23, he explicitly said, If you think your wife has cheated on you, you should go to the priest who will then perform an abortion. This whole idea uh, that is pushed by like these evangelical nutcases, these Christian nationalists, this idea that God is pro-life, completely a-biblical, completely a-historical. This is not what the Bible said whatsoever. And uh, yeah, this flash of light, what, like literally the soul entering the body or whatever. I've, I've seen a whole bunch of bizarre comments about it. Like, what? What the hell are you talking about? It's just zinc being released and, and having a reaction with the system around it. But whatever. Okay. Sure. Dude, there are so many bizarre state-level representatives out there. It's not just this dude from West Virginia, Senator Azinger. Dusty Devers is making massive waves right now. He's a Republican, District 32. He's a House member, I think. And he's from Oklahoma, who is, by the way, if you haven't been following, turning out nutcase after nutcase right now. Dusty Devers is only the latest in a long line of nutcases from Oklahoma. Before we continue, I want to talk about Dusty Devers and the crazy stuff that he said, but I don't want you guys to like lose hope in anything, okay? Yes, there are state-level representatives that are complete nutcases. They're losing. They're losing. The Republican position is a traditionalist position. It's a conservative position. They want to conserve the past. They want to resist change at all costs. And that's just a losing position. That's just what it is. It's always been a losing position. It will always be a losing position because society changes. It progresses. It builds. It grows. It changes. That's just how it works. So how do these state-level representatives or, or the uh, Republican Party in general, how do they react to that fact? Outrage. They react with outrage. They get everybody whipped into a blood frenzy over something, some specific thing. It was CRT for a while, then it was wokeism, and then it was, you know, it's always had something to do with black people or trans people or gay people or some other minority group, uh, Mexicans, immigrants, anybody that they can target and blame for their problems, they'll do it. Rep the Re Republican Party, the official of, uh, I'm sorry, the officials in the Republican Party is who I'm talking about when I say they. I'm talking Dusty Devers. I mean, state level and federal level Republican representatives and Republican media like Fox News. They'll demonize anybody they can. Now, that's pretty much the only card that they have. They cannot resist change forever. It is going to happen. While we've got nutcases out here like uh, Dusty Devers, who we'll listen to in a minute, or like the last guy who's saying evolution is a dying theory, when we got nutcases in Congress saying that, or even crazier, dude who ran for governor of Pennsylvania got 40% of the vote in 2022, almost won, Doug Mastriano. This is uh, early October 2022, right before the voting took place. Mastriano is doing a campaign event. He comes out here and he says this. On day one, the sexualization of our kids, pole dancing, and all this other crap that's going on will be forbidden in our schools. Pole dancing in schools. He thinks pole dancing is happening in schools. 
he doesn't really think that, does he? This is just the outrage machine churning away, isn't it? On day one, all the graphic, pornographic books that are in elementary schools will be, will be pulled out. Like there's an XXX section with a curtain there where kids who are over six can walk in the back and pick out which movie they want. It's ridiculous, dude. Anyway, the point is that these people are resisting change and their only weapon is outrage. And they can only keep people outraged over one subject at a time, really. I mean, they can go off in these little directions, but it splits their focus. It splits the outrage. So right now, they are laser-focused on the border. And immigrants and Mexicans and drug cartels... Blah, 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 blah. When they're focused on one subject, you know what they're not doing? They're not talking about CRT. They're not talking about Black Lives Matter being a terrorist organization or whatever other thing. They're not talking about all of the nonsense that they say about the black community. And the black community makes progress. They move forward. Their issues are not as politicized as they were previously. They win court battles. They progress. They, uh, the gay community progresses. The trans community progresses. Every time there's focus on another group, every other group progresses. Women didn't have the right to own credit cards or have mortgages in the 1970s. Yes, the 1970s. Your mom probably wasn't allowed to have a credit card. And look where we are now. Having a, a woman as a president is not out of the question. In fact, it's not even a question. Yeah, of course, we could have a woman as president. We just haven't yet. Every time these people laser focus on a subject, they forget about the others. And people donate to these organizations, the NAACP, the ACLU, and the secular causes, American Atheists, FFRF. They, they, they donate to these organizations and we get wins until they shift focus to something new. They're doing, you know, every time there's been a lack of progress in society. Every time there's been attempted progress in society, there's the church standing in the way, waiting for it and preventing it from happening at any cost. And here we sit again, watching it all play over again, like a movie. Anyway, the point here is you don't need to worry about these people. Yeah, they're nutcases. Yeah, they're trying to take over the government. That's true. And we need to vote like our lives depend on it because somebody's life does. Your vote could save somebody's life in all seriousness, really. Crawl over broken glass to vote for your representatives because you know the people who vote for Dusty Deavers will be doing that. They will do whatever it takes to vote for him. You need to be just as fervent and serious about voting. It's a civic duty. It should be mandatory in my opinion but anyway that's another story the point is don't be too discouraged by but by what these people say yeah they say crazy stuff don't feel down about it they're losing they're freaking out because they're losing so when you see people freaking out like this going down an absolutely bizarre rabbit hole oh we want to ban no fault divorce now we want to ban birth control or condoms now or whatever Guess who's moving forward while they're saying all this ridiculous nonsense that nobody wants? The black community is moving forward. The gay community is moving forward. It's a struggle. We have to fight every day. We have to donate. We have to work at it. We have to volunteer. But we're making progress every single day. And they're losing. Society will progress, whether they like that fact or not. Anyway, with that in mind, let's listen to Dusty Deepers here. The government doesn't make the law. The people rise up, power rises up from the people, and the people make the law. And that law should be in accordance with God's word and the conscience. And this... And the conscience. Well, here's the deal, Dusty. I don't know who's God's word to follow. Which one should I trust? Should I trust your interpretation should I trust Martin Luther King Jr.'s interpretation? Should I trust Kenneth Copeland's interpretation? Whose interpretation? My pastor's interpretation? Whose? There is a verse to justify anything, any moral position in the Bible. 
32,000 verses, 66 books total, 27 in the New Testament, four of which were primarily narratives about Jesus' life. There is not a single moral position in the Bible that isn't, re practically at least, reversed a chapter later. So I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about, oh, it should be based on the Bible. Literally anything that we do is based on the Bible. You want a biblical justification for you as a religious zealot to stay the f*** out of government? Let me give you your biblical justification. Am I, have, I don't have my Bible on me. Romans 13, Romans chapter 13. The government is there because God put them in their place, for better or worse. Focus on the kingdom of God. Focus on winning souls. Focus on bringing people to Jesus. Don't worry about the government and what they're up to. Direct contradiction to what Dusty Devers is saying here. But okay. So basically he's saying, the point of the clip is, if laws are passed that contradict his interpretation of what the Bible says, then those laws should be ignored. That's effectively what he's saying here. You just step back a little. Keep listening. People and the people make the law, and that law should be in accordance with God's word and the conscience. And this, these, and the conscience. I, I don't know what that means. These federal laws are restricting both of those things. And so, when this authority, the wait, federal laws restrict both the conscience and God's word. What? I don't have any clue what he's even talking about restricting both of those things. And so when this authority, namely the federal government, uh, commands what God's forbid, God has forbidden or has not required, for, second, whenever it forbids what God commands or has not forbidden, third, whenever it oversteps its constitutional jurisdiction, or fourth, binds the conscience that God alone has jurisdiction, we, those who are under who are their authority we are the authority for the federal government right so <laughs> we are the authority for the federal government he's not talking about himself as a state senator he isn't a representative for the federal government he's talking about himself as a christian nationalist he who is a christian nationalist is in authority of the federal government he has given himself authority of the federal government that's psychotic get Help, Dusty. So Christian nationalists, effectively, is what he's saying. Go on. Are the authority for the federal government uh, in this situation. We are not to obey them whenever they take tyrannical action. And tyrannical action is defined by anything that Dusty Devers doesn't like. Anything that he thinks is wrong. That means adult entertainment. That means no-fault divorce. I, I have him on recording saying all of this stuff. I could play every single one if you want. Uh, that means birth control. That means um, abortion to any degree, no matter what, at any point. Say so you're 15 weeks along, and you find out that there's no head, and the birth process is going to end in your death and the death of the fetus, and th there's no way around it. That's okay. God's will. Let it happen. That's his view. For real. Sometimes they twist things around and they gerrymander and they mess around with the political structure enough to get themselves into a position of power. By the way, they Republicans, by and large, are extremely unpopular in the United States. Democrats make up a vast majority of voters in the United States, but that's neither here nor there. They weasel their way into positions of authority by gerrymandering, splitting up districts and making them look like a ridiculous maze or something like that so that they will win a district like Dusty Devers, for example. When he gets in, he gets enough authority that he has the ability to reverse Roe v. Wade. You know, the Supreme Court, they reversed Roe v. Wade and Casey, I think, as well, maybe, thus effectively banning abortion for all intents and purposes. And he gets massive backlash from everybody. Nobody, practically, in the country wants abortion outlawed to the degree that Dusty Devers mistakenly believes that God wants abortion outlawed. Numbers 5, 11 to 23, pretty clearly outlines that God likes abortion, wants it to happen, thinks it's a good thing in some cases. 
Anyway, doesn't matter how far along you are, by the way. If your wife cheated on you, you should you should get an abortion, in according to the Bible. I'm just quoting the Bible here, okay? Like, I don't know what it is with state representatives right now, but we've really got to keep an eye on these people, okay? And uh, by the way, look, I know that it's like a Christian thing to stick your hand up in like a Hitler salute-esque type of thing, but please don't do that. Find another way to praise Jesus. Find a different salute for Jesus other than the Hitler one, please. Yeah, check out this other clip from Dusty Devers. This is mid-March 2024. Jesus, your warrior king, has summoned you. He has commanded your formation for battle. So he's telling uh, people, he's telling Christian men, it's time to form a militia and fight. Line up, men. Your charge is to fight the king's battle with the king's weapons, to fight on his battlefront, to make offensive war on the gates of hell, and to prevail, to push the lines ever forward, to extend the dynasty and the dominion of our king who rules from on high. And he used the word dominion there for a very specific reason. Seven mountains dominionism. And every enemy will bow. He will footstool every enemy, and this world will, will be dominionized, and it will glo- There it is again, dominionized. Catch that? It will glory reflect like the waters cover the sea. The world will be conquered, and the conquerors will sit with King Jesus on his throne. Amen. Men, it is no time for shrinking back. Know this, you will suffer. You will be called to share in the sufferings of our King, but they cannot be compared to the eternal weight of glory that is to be revealed to you. In your groaning, you will grow. In your mourning, you will hope. In your struggle, you will triumph. So That is psychotic. Seriously, all the yelling, all the pounding, and all of the pointing and all that stuff sounds like a Hitler speech. No joke. He's calling people to war right now. Very clearly, right? Triumph. So keep your eyes on our loving, crucified, but resurrected warrior king, Jesus. Yeah, all right. Look, I have the document, Biblical Basis for War, somewhere. It's a PDF. Uh, and it's a PDF written by a House representative, I think, in Washington, Spokane, Washington. It's absolutely psychotic. It's like 10 pages long or something, and it describes the Christian nation that he wants to build and the reasons why they go to war. Just take a look at just like one page here. This is on um, pajiba.com. I'm, I'm unfamiliar, but like I've read the book on stream before. I have the book. So this is one of the pages. 10 rules of war. A, conduct a census of all able-bodied males, 18 to 45. Identify exemptions. See above. Appoint captains of 10s, 50s, 100s, and 1,000s. Avoid bloodshed if possible. Make an offer of peace before declaring war. The offer of peace is complete capit uh, capitulation. If you agree to what, uh, what we want, which is a Christian government, then we won't kill you. That's the offer of peace. It is not a negotiation or compromise of righteousness, in his words here, it says. Must surrender on terms of justice and righteousness. Stop all abortions. No same-sex marriage. No idolatry or occultism. No communism. And must be obey a biblical law. That's weird. I don't remember communism being in the Bible as evil, but okay. And um, biblical law. Wasn't uh, the Mosaic law like undone by Jesus when he came around? That's why we eat shellfish today. It's why we eat crab or like shrimp or whatever. Why would we follow the Mosaic law? It's meaningless. Even the Ten Commandments, completely meaningless to us today, to Christians. If they yield, they must pay share of work or taxes. If they do not yield, kill all the males. War is not waged against nations, but against man. No scorched earth or Sherman's march to the sea. Cut down only non-food trees necessary for supplies. Safeguard production over politics or retribution. This guy really thought it out, like, a lot. Do not attack or kill productive citizens. They are your base of support after the enemy is defeated. Law of booty. Law of booty. Sounds like my kind of law, okay? 
Number one, one half of the booty goes to those who fought. One half goes to those who didn't. Divide evenly to the individuals. Each gives tribute to the Lord. One, ties to the church and ministry. Two, none to the government. It removes a temptation to fight. This is psychotic. This is straight up psychotic shit right here, for real. Get help, people. That That's the kind of stuff that Dusty Devers is down for. I, he didn't write that manifesto. I don't know if he's even familiar with Matt Shea. But, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's the biblical basis for war, the manifesto. I don't know what's going on with state representatives, but my God, dude, they are going off the rails hard. You need to vote. Get out there and vote for real. Get these people out. No more gerrymandering. Don't let them get away with this anymore. They're not popular. Nobody really wanted abortion banned in all cases. Everybody wanted exceptions or certain months or whatever. Well, people like this guy here or Dusty Devers or whoever else, they want it banned. I mean, banned, banned, even though the Bible endorses it. It's psychotic. I mean, like I said, don't feel too down about it. Conservatism or traditionalism, it's a losing position. They're going to lose. And while they're whipping people into a blood frenzy over this stupid thing over here, we're making progress elsewhere. So don't sweat it. Just vote. Do your best. Don't worry about the rest. That's what I always say. Tell me what you think about it in the comments.